Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Good evening, wherever you are. I have to always acknowledge Andy, our, our uh, viewers in Australia, who always seem to watch these matches of Roma at the most ungodly of hours. But wherever you are, welcome back to another episode of the Roma Press Podcast. We hope you are doing well. Before we get into Roma's first victory in the Derby in precisely 748 days, but it, it seems far more than that. Thank you to our newest patron over at Patreon, Bodmash Crow. We, of course, thank you for your support and all of to and, all, and to all of our other wonderful patrons who make this possible. If you would like to join the nothing short of Gaonda group chat uh, currently in the moments after the post-match, you can go to patreon.com slash Roma Press and then find us on social media at IS Roma Press. Like, subscribe, all of that good stuff. We appreciate all of your support, truly. It, it has been overwhelming in recent months. It, it means more than we can ever uh, express to you. So thank you to everyone. Oh, first Derby victory in t- over two years. I say two years, but it is over two years. 748 days. So in that time, I you know... Th- Three dozen children of mine have seen me. Yeah, I was born. about to say. I was about. I was about I, I, to I, ask you for an update on how many children. It was yeah. two children. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I mean, there it, you go. It is astonishing. It, it it did strike me because more than the fact that it was two years since a victory in the Derby della Capitale. Do you know that is also the last time they scored a goal in the game? Yeah. We haven't scored in four in four derbies in, uh, in, against arguably one of the weaker Lazio's defensively because the last Lazio under Maurizio Sarri was a disaster, especially this season. Yes, um, with Tudor, we didn't really know what to expect. I don't even know how Roma prepared for this match because, like with Lecce, you were really facing a, a brand new side, a brand new side with little to no evidence of what they want to achieve under Igor Tudor. Well, that is true. You you never know when it comes to the bald guys what to expect from them. At least with Gotti, you have that beautiful head of hair on top of him. Um, although I would like to say uh, somebody with that head of hair is perhaps more consistent, but then we saw what they put up tonight against Milan, which was uh, one-way traffic. Um, let's, let's start there though, with the managerial, or I, I, I suppose the, the approach from each manager, because this was a particular sort of derby in the sense of two new managers on each side, two new managers who have all come within recent months, which I, I again, our, our, our dad and analytics staff, the, the, they're on uh, holiday still, I can't remember or at least in my memory, in my lifetime. I can't remember where you had a situation like this where both clubs so close together sacked the manager um, and you come into a derby where you have each manager making his his debut in the derby. And after I saw Lazio defeat Juve, first off, I, I didn't think that Lazio were particularly impressive in that match. <laughs> Juve have been about as abysmal as uh, Roma at times this season. It just goes to show you the difference if you have uh, more talented individuals who can take you or at least carry you to a certain point in the table. I was surprised, though, more so, not by Tudor, but by De Rossi. I don't know if you noticed it during the game, but I was struck by uh, the, the, the conservatism at times. I mean, I, I was watching Angelino, and, and this kept jumping off to me, and I, I had to wait to see after the match what what the data said. But he, he barely seemed to have gone forward. And I looked at his average position, and it was, I mean, well below the halfway line and the Roma's own half. I mean, the guy barely went forward. So I was I was actually kind of surprised that Rossi took more of him a, 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 a careful approach, I should say. I mean, he, he definitely did not want Roma taking too many risks tonight. I think most would agree on that. Um, but above all, when you look at the score, one to zero, I think people will, again, if you did not watch a match, you will Google it and you say, oh, wow, it was close. Uh, could have gone either way. 
I, again, one to zero, but is anybody going to argue that Roma were undeserving? Because I, I don't think anybody is going to make that argument. However, and I'll put the I'll put the data on, on the screen now. When you look at the XG, Lazio ended the match with a higher XG than that of Roma, 0.5. Roma, 0.47. Again, I am glad that there are people far more educated, far smarter than myself who calculate these sort of things because Andy, I, I I don't think you, I, or any other, even if you are not involved in the media realm, if you are watching that game, I, I, I said before I even cheated and looked at the, the, the statistics, I thought Roma would end with an XG of 1.5, something like that. But to see it so low, I was kind of astonished because they hit the post twice or once. They hit the post as they do every match. Um, they also had a couple of very clear cut opportunities. I'm thinking of that one where El Sharawi delivers it right into the area to Lukaku. Uh, you would, you would expect him to score that every day of the week without question. So I was surprised because I, I think of that action on itself, not even the head, the headed goal on the corner kick of Mancini. I can't recall a single clear cut opportunity of Lazio. There, there was nothing that thought at any point where, I thought to myself, wow, they, they are pressing Roma. They are about to bend. Uh, they're bending too much. Maybe this could be the point of breaking. I, I mean, as far as performances in winning a match of 1-0 to zero by a singular goal, I thought there was still a very clear, I won't say dominant, but nobody's going to argue with this result, right? Because I, I, I maybe it's just my bias, but I, that's why I throw it to you. Because I, I, I think this was a, a deserved result that maybe even lies a little bit and is uh, uh, more more favorable to, to Lazio, frankly. I, I think that uh, Roma approached this game really well. All, all, all things considered, you know, when when we look at uh, the recent history of, of the Derby and of Roma's involvement in the Derby. I mean, this tonight was, uh, uh, or rather this evening, was a, a convincing display from Roma. Um, yes. I, I got the sense that they knew what they were in for, as opposed to the match, uh, the last Derby that we saw in the Coppa Italia, which, horrible, in my opinion, and I said it on the on the last live stream I, I, I did prior to this Derby, was one of the ugliest games I had seen Roma in, and was one of the most gutless performances of, from Roma, where they couldn't even get one shot on goal before the 85th minute. Nice. Um, this time around, I think Roma were prepared, and there was something more to it. There was some hunger to to you know to reclaim uh, this Derby because the 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 idea of going longer than we've gone, so having say five derbies where you can't score and when you where you come out as the loser um, or with a draw, that's unacceptable. And this time around, I had the feeling that I was watching a team that was well aware of what the mission is. They were a bit more cautious with regards to, to Lazio, how Lazio would play. But overall, I think Roma were in complete control of not only of the game, but of their own performance. It was, it just, yeah, it, it felt like they were in, they were in the game. It wasn't, it didn't feel like, uh, you know, it was a back and forth between the two teams and the two teams eventually, you know, the, the, the one thing that separates them is that one goal by Gian, Gianluca Mancini. No, Roma did everything they needed to do to bring the result home. They absolutely did. As far as defensive performances go, I have to say that, it might be the best of the era, the very brief era thus far of Daniele De Rossi. Again, I, I thought Lazio created close to nothing, close to nothing. And to be honest with you, I was kind of worried in that respect because Tudor he clearly, I won't say scrapping entirely everything that uh, Sarri had done. But he certainly hasn't playing a different way. He has guys uh, that were not even remotely in the plans of Sarri now playing vital roles under him in this new formation. Obviously, th there was some question as to whether Immobile would start or not. Uh, Felipe Anderson, he always seems to perform well in the derby. 
So I, I was worried that Roma, they would be caught uh, in a vulnerable position. Add to that too, Indica. I thought it was interesting. And this is something that Roma put out there in the days prior to the match, uh, as as well as his agent uh, with the insertion of Selic in the starting formation. That, to me, w- say what you want about him. Say what you will about Karsdorp. Christus, and I've made my opinion very clear on, I, I do not like him of the three. He's the one I, I like the least. When you go with Salik over Karsdorp, clearly, right, you are trying to at least provide some defensive solidity that Karsdorp just is not able to provide. You are going to sacrifice something in the attacking realm, but you are at least hoping to get something more defensively. I thought from 0 to 90, I would have to, I I suppose, go back and look at every single match. But defensively, I mean, I I don't know about you, but this was one of the best under De Rossi, and I thought they conceded close to nothing. Oh, absolutely. Nothing. Yeah. And it was, that's that's the whole thing, is because they, they, they knew they had to change something. You couldn't play this game the way you'd played the, the last uh, three games where I think really there was a feeling that the team was almost sleepwalking. I think in this match, the feeling is different. Whether you like the scoreline or not, whether you expected more, it's fine. But the, 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 the overall idea from, from this match is Roma were in control. I liked what Diego Llorente did. I liked Sulik. Yes. I liked Gianluca Mancini. Um, it was it was a good, solid team effort that prevented Lazio, a team that is known for Lazio, no matter who's on the bench, they will always care about the derby and they will yes. always play 100%. You managed to nullify them. And that's something that Lazio have done to us for the past two years. They nullified us. They never let us into any of the last four derbies. This time around, you could sense that there was a willingness to change things, to alter things, to start all over, to 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 get a clean slate with De Rossi. Um, some I, I know some patrons wanted a scoreline akin to three zero, three to one, four to one, but this I think it works perhaps even better given where Roma were after Lecce. There were so many questions, yes. so much criticism directed at the team. Can they do it? Can they hold on to a lead? Can they play defensively? Can they can they maintain composure against an opponent like Lazio? Because yes, the belief was well, Roma just went, you know, they went up against uh, easy teams, teams such as Salernitana and Las Verona, Sassuolo. Wait until they face a team of Lazio's caliber. Thank God we did. And thank God it went right. Because as we always say, the Derby can have multiple implications. It can always be a make or break game. If you lose the Derby, it can really take the wind out of you. After Lecce, Roma could not afford to be in that position. I know I say this after every victory, it seems like. But the thing when it comes to Roma that I supposed in this old age of mine, having done this for a while now, the thing I, I never really appreciated was uh, the mental effect of some wins versus others. Drawing late against Fiorentina in the manner that they did, it, there is some effect to that from a mentality point of view. Losing this has such a detrimental effect beyond this game, beyond losing three points, be, be, beyond this exact moment. Um, that is something I think earlier doing all doing this in the media landscape that I, I, I never appreciated, or at least I, ne- I perhaps downplayed. In an, in an environment like Roma, I, I just think the mental portion of this or the psychological portion of this matters t- two to three times more than uh, a place like Torino. I just think that it is a very particular city to play in with a particular set of supporters. Winning this match, as you just said, I think there is something bigger to it than this exact moment. It's more than three. But everybody knows that. Okay, it's more than three points. But if you again, I hate to harp on this, but when you look at the matches following tonight, you could not. You could not, in my opinion. You had to win this first to to begin. 
I would not have been content with a draw. I think a point would not have been disastrous, but I, I certainly think it would have had a, a detriment for the remainder of the season because I, I truly do not see a very viable path to fourth position had you dropped points tonight. Because now you have Udinese, then you have Bologna, and then you have Napoli, Juve coming up, and we also have Europa League. The knock-on effect that losing tonight could have had, I, I, I'm not going to say it would have been season over, but it it would have been about as close as possible because the psychological damage, in my opinion, because what happens after this? Oh, well, fourth place is not going to happen. Oh, well, what are they going to do in the summer? We go down that path. We go down that path where we start talking of transfer market. And I've said this time and time again. The seasons that are the absolute worst are when we begin to actually talk of transfer markets like heavily in April. It means your season has gone to shit already. It's done. You're playing for nothing the final two months of the season. I could not mentally get there right now. I needed something after this. Se- we say this every time, but this season truly has seemed like a marathon. It has been months and months and months. and. Having lost tonight, I think it would have put fourth place about as close to out of question as it feasibly could have been without people thinking, well, they can do it here if they get a win against here and they drop points. here. They had to win tonight. They had to win tonight. And I think most people would agree with that, particularly after dropping points to Lecce. And the fact that you do it in the Derby, I think, can really help give you some sort of boost in the in the upcoming league affair against Udinese and then in the Europa League. Doesn't mean they are going to win it, but obviously the position the position you are in now versus had you lost or even dropped. Oh God, man, tonight, can you imagine coming com- yeah, can you imagine coming on here and talking about a, oh. a, a, another derby defeat after Lecce? Because after Lecce mm. I mean, we were also uh, you. You, I came up as the glass half full guy. You came up with as the glass half empty guy, and uh, it was not the energy was not good. The energy was not good because there was a lot of doubt. Oh, the honeymoon period is over. That was one of the phrases that were yeah. <laughs> circling around in our patron group chat. The honeymoon is over. It's done. Look, you know when when Mourinho left, Roma had. Uh, we're in this position in the table, and with uh, with De Rossi, they're still in that position in the table. And you know what's all of this, and uh, what what's the meaning of life? Uh, whereas, <laughs> yes. whereas, you know, tonight, as as we said prior to the derby, it's it's a breather. You're like you you're mm. given oxygen. You're you're being given a chance to go on and fight because you drop points tonight, my friend. Mentally, mm. you check out. Because fifth straight derby, no win. Fifth straight derby of potentially not scoring a goal. Come on. I mean, that's going into the history books, you know? So, right. I mean, yeah. that that's something that Torino have, have been doing with Juventus. It seems like every time there is a derby involving mm. Torino and Juventus... The, 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 there is no, there is no discussion. Juventus are winning. Forget about yeah, it. So yeah, that last goal was Br- Bruno Perez when he did that. Then <laughs> absolutely, win. that's like... and and when he went on, that's that's how he sealed his move to Roma. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> blessing and a curse. Blessing and a curse. That that's the last remarkable thing beyond uh, saving us in that game against Shakhtar uh, Donetsk and uh, getting into a traffic accident um, at night Oof. in some questionable neighborhoods of of the city. Yeah. <laughs> so, where, where certain activities so, are known for yes, more well, let's not get into that because if, if he's listening, <laughs> we're, we're doing it get a again. But um, I can't go down. It, no, we don't want to. No, 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 we can't. We can't. We can't. <laughs> and thank God, thank God, we don't have to go there because had Roma lost, perhaps we would have gone down that rabbit hole of what yes. Bruno Perez was up to in 2018. Thank God we don't have to. Thank God we're talking about a team that got a really important victory ahead of a very important stretch of games. Um, Milan are flying by. Uh, Lazio, obviously, I mean, you always have to contextualize. Was this Lazio team phenomenal? No. Uh, Igor Tudor clearly has still no idea how to how to field his side. We saw some really good things against Juventus in Serie A when they played them and won. And then we saw some bad things when they lost in the Coppa Italia most recently. So obviously yeah. you were always going into 
this match against the team that is trying to figure itself out. But the same goes for Roma, because after that result in Lecce, all the pressure pressure of the world was on Roma. You lose this match, you lose the Champions League race. It's it's clear as day that you 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 come away with zero points tonight, you're out, and that has implications on De Rossi, on DiBala, on Lukaku, on everybody, in, in, including the Friedkins. So you knew what the last two months would have been like with the oh, with, with the defeat oh, of tonight. It was already. Lukaku. I mean, oh, the last no. week. Oh. The last week, the last week, we've seen all kinds of stories. Dybala, Dybala yes. is going. Dybala is staying. Mm-hmm. Lukaku wants to stay, but he's going. Roma want to keep Lukaku, but they can't afford it. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, De Rossi. De Rossi is, wants to stay, but Fiorentina want De Rossi. De Rossi, mm-hmm. next two months, they're key to understand whether he's going to stay. As always with Roma and anything that happens in and around Roma, the result itself is not only important for what happens on the pitch, but also to keep the noise down to a minimum. Yes. That's what Roma did tonight. You are spot on with that. It, it was about keeping the noise down. It was also obviously capturing three points ahead of the, the most difficult stretch of the season. This In the next two to three weeks, we will know what uh, position realistically Roma are going to finish if we're in for a, another absolute uh, slog of a tournament where uh, in which uh, European uh, European tournament Roma are going to play and whether or not it, it could be Champions League or whether or not you and I have to uh, bring out our, our, our Wayfinder maps and, and begin to find the names of which Eastern European cities uh, Roma are going to be playing at in very absurd times. I I, I couldn't do it. I yeah, you talk about the th- we would have been talking about the things that you uh, said had they lost tonight. Uh, we're talking of sporting director. We're talking about naturally transfer market, and then by way of that, we we have to talk about financial fair play. We have to talk about how Roma have no budget; they can't afford anybody. I, I, listen, the doom and gloom stuff. I, we're we are obviously used to it by now. At some point, or so, at some point, we have to wait. It, the longer you can prolong the suffering, the better we all are. I, I realistically, had they lost tonight, I was, I was mentally preparing myself for that because we saw some of it this week, as you said. And in fairness, a lot of this has to do with the more local uh, media surrounding Roma, where. Um, Teleradio Stadio, the, the, the usual suspects where they're talking about more of the gossipy, uh, you know, everything that is outside of a victory, it, it is a, a, an emergency situation. I, I couldn't get there because, I mean, the margins between Roma going into the Champions League and not right now in this exact moment, they are so fine. The, the margins are so thin that one slip up one way or the other or one uh, unforeseen result in the positive direction it, it, it changes the entire outlook you have on the summer. So I can't do this thing where we where it's tennis, back and forth, back and forth, where we go from happy to mad to, oh, the world is ending. Oh, no, what are we going to do? This is the most crucial stretch of the season. And again, I, I can't impart enough the fact that a, I won't say a defeat tonight would have been the end of the season because I, I think that would be hyperbole, but the knock-on effect that a loss has tonight is so detrimental that I don't think that is appreciated enough. And the way I like to describe it is just what you said. You prolonged or you at least put off talks of uh, absolute emergency. As far as some of the upcoming games, though, that is obviously the big unknown as far as can they maintain some of this? Can they maintain this uh, momentum, so to speak? Um, we have the first leg against Milan coming up. I would like to say that I know what to expect from both sides, but I, I have to tell you, you said Milan flying right now. To me, that is that is simply a case of uh, there being one team right now in Serie A worth anything, and that is Inter. I mean, they were speaking just weeks ago of Pioli, sending this guy to the streets and making him beg. Absolutely. Yeah. On the streets of uh, uh, rightfully so. Unfortunately, well, yeah, unfortunately, but... it seems like he's getting back into the swing of things. Well, and that is the thing that I find most particular in this situation. Um, 
listen, we are used to Roma being a side where from one night to the next, consistency is one of the last things they are known for. I watch Milan against Lecce and I think, okay, well, is Lecce that shit or is Milan that good? And I, I do think there is a case to be made on both ends of this, uh, or at least uh, a bit of each factors into it. As of this moment, okay, uh, we're going out, we are approaching half of an hour before even having mentioned the first leg of the Europa League at San Siro. We know what happened earlier this season, twice between Roma and Milan. I can't mentally, after winning a derby, take myself back to either of those games. I, I just, I'm in too good of a decent, I mean, even if I weren't in a good mood, just I, I don't want to be putting on uh, the depressive heavy metal music, uh, you know, like My Chemical Romance and crying in the corner with uh, 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 with eyeliner running down my face. I, I can't do that. I'm in far too good of a mood. You, Wait, let's get back on get, that eyeliner. What are you talking about? No. <laughs> what are we are talking you giving, about, John? Are you, are you giving to them any chance? Like, like again, I don't have the, any the, eyeliner, so I can't. That's something that you you can only. That's talk early two thousands uh, emo okay. rock, man. Wow. Come on, okay. don't you listen you to my that chemical? Phase? I didn't go who through are, that phase. Who are who are some of the other ones? Um, no, I went. But, I didn't go through that phase. I I think I listened to David Guetta or something. <laughs> um, I watch Milan. I watch Roma. Okay, we know what happened earlier this season. No need to go into that. Uh, part of me thinks, and maybe this is the ignorance is bliss portion of uh, my way of thinking. The the unknown is almost a positive on the side of Roma. In the sense of, okay, we, Milan clearly knew how to play Roma under Jose Mourinho. They clearly felt comfortable. I don't think they even, de- they, they didn't win against Milan under Jose Mourinho, no? I don't the think so. I don't think, he, 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 I, think the, I think I only remember something vaguely positive was the 2-2 draw. Remember when we came back? The late one, yes. We came Iban, back, yes. Yeah. Iban, yes. Beyond that, um, I, I mean, Milan have had the number of Roma for a few seasons now. So clearly, clearly with a new manager, new way of playing, new formation, th- there is at least, if you want to believe that Roma have a chance to progress, the fact that everything is new, that there is a bit of unknown on the part of Milan as to what to expect from Roma. Uh, I don't want to just preview the first leg because eh, the entirety are you giving Roma any chance? Are, do you have any hope within your heart that we can be here uh, in what? The 10 to 11 days, something like that, after the second leg, and we are feasibly sitting in this position, looking at each other, not wanting to uh, rip our hair out after having watched the second leg of the Olympico. Like, is, is there any way you can envision Roma progressing? Because we always, we're not going to say they have no chance. I. No, clearly. I mean, I think that they do have a chance. God damn it! I mean, we we you know we are we are in it for a reason, and as opposed to Milan, we have experience in this competition. So mm. why the hell wouldn't we be up for it, um, Milan? And obviously, we'll try to exploit that first home advantage. Yes, but as you said, Milan had Roma's number under Mourinho. We have to see what De Rossi comes up with. To me, as you said, this Milan side is clearly vulnerable. Clearly, right now, they just went through a good spell because the games aligned correctly. It was their moment. They made And they have the players to do it. So unless Pioli, yeah. who is, is a sorry excuse of a coach, can mess it up like he did in the first half of the season, they have a good team. They have good players. They have an ex- excellent attack. Um if he just lets them do their thing and doesn't try to be the genius, the Pep Guardiola of Italy, which he was, uh, <laughs> you know, linked uh, linked with in the Scudetto. Anybody year. who wears a turtleneck consistently can never. And is bold. And is bold. Yeah. Uh, then that's Pep Guardiola. Um, <laughs> but uh, the people forget about the great Serge Cosmi, who also 
uh, was bold and mostly dressed like Pep Guardiola, but yet it never. Drew, yeah, just like a fifteen-year-old man. Yet, no, n- yet Old never. N- nobody, nobody ever seemed to seem to compare Sergio Cosmi to Pep Guardiola, <laughs> which is a shame because he's he's got as much bragging rights to being uh, akin to Pep Guardiola as, uh, as Stefano Pioli. Um, oh, I thought you were going to say Stefano Colantuono. Uh, no, the guy from Salernitana, by the way, who, who, is, who is back. Yeah, the, uh, back, back, the with the, back, with boys, back with the boys, back with Costas Manolas and F- Federico Fazio. Um, <laughs> no, do Roma, do Roma have a chance? Obviously, they have a chance. God damn it. You know, they, this is, uh, what are we talking about here? We're, we're talking about what? We're talking about a team that is competing on two fronts. Um there hasn't come a point where they have to make the decision: Do we drop out uh, in the Euro- of the Europa League and focus on Serie A, or vice versa? So let's enjoy this because uh, these moments, especially this derby win, don't come too often. It seems like so. Yeah. Um, this is it. But do Roma right now? Do Roma? Do Roma have to make a conscious decision and focus on one thing over the other? No. Perhaps we're going to be sitting here a week from now oh. and, and, and the tune will completely change. But as long as they're in it, as long as they have the experience to, to, to draw inspiration from, and that's what they've been doing in the Europa League, it seems like they turn the light switch on, um, then, then I guess sky's the limit, especially with a Milan side that is vulnerable, fragile, that, uh, that has somebody like Stefano Pioli uh, entering the, the the final months of this very much talked about tenure of his, he still got one more year on his contract, and there is all this talk about him staying, going, staying, going. Um, you you have to exploit that. You have to exploit that because you're uh, you're Roma under De Rossi, a team that Milan haven't met, and uh, and tonight uh, against Lazio, that's what we got. We got two teams that were testing each other out, but Roma did a far better job at controlling the narrative, controlling the story, controlling the match. Yeah, I looked at the at their calendar and perhaps I had just had this, this wrong idea of them. I don't know, because every time I watch them, I, I am never overly impressed. I... Again, maybe that is me just being too harsh of a critic, but they have they have only lost in the league once, and in the Europa League they have lost once, and that was the second the second leg against Ren. So, since what uh, I'm trying to look prior to that, so since December 9th of two thousand and twenty three to today, they have lost uh, only three games. Three games. The way you and I just spoke of them, you would think that this was a team uh, mid-table that was expected to win Scudetto. But I, I, I don't know. Per, are they just the result of a very... Listen, I, I understand there are some cheerleaders who like to uh, uh, like to talk about Serie A in uh, perhaps a, a more favorable manner than what is actually the case. Are, are, are they just a result of a very shit Serie A? Be, because beyond Inter, there are no, there, there are not many good teams in Serie A this season. Are, are Milan merely the, bene, the beneficiary of that? Perhaps. Um, I, I looked again at their results and looking at it, that they've only lost a, a couple of times uh, in the last four to five months. Maybe it is just me. I don't know if you get this sense too. But but when I watch them, we from weekend to weekend, I I am not overly impressed. Yes, they have plenty of quality, but by no means, if you are to compare them to Inter, I I, I don't think they are anywhere close. And I look at how Roma played against Inter under De Rossi, and I think to myself, okay, they can do this. They they can do this. They absolutely can. Is there, just before we go, is, we're not going to do predictions. Everybody knows we don't do that. The attack of Milan is the thing that is is most worrisome, yeah? Uh, whether or not Roma can hold up defensively, I think that's where it's going to be made. Uh, it's going to be make or break that area of the pitch because, uh, I mean, Giroud, how many times does it seem like Roma have been purged by them uh, in the 
league games over the last two seasons. I mean, they seem to get absolutely dismantled at the back by Milan. I mean, that's where it's going to have to come, yeah? Absolutely. It's uh, always up front. Quality players like Pulisic, like Leao, even Teo Hernandez, who if if Pioli doesn't mess with his position and doesn't play him as a center back can cause you a lot of problems. <laughs> that yeah. seemed like this great genius move from Pioli to have uh, Teo Hernandez, one of the best left backs in the world and one of the best attacking defenders actually play in the back line um great great stuff um, yeah one so, of those moves that somebody makes so it, it, almost as if it, it goes well he can be called a genius but yes. in the moment we think what well, pretty hell? much i mean that's what, that's what that's what that's what that's what he tried to do that's what he tried to do <laughs> yes. he, he, yes. instead of instead of putting uh, the young uh, defender simic <laughs> as a starter he would put teo hernandez as a defender obviously because then you get uh, uh, unlimited praise in la gazeta de los sport <laughs> with you know, with with uh, with this match, we're looking at we're looking at a, a Roma team that uh, is 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 it's going to be interesting how they utilize this momentum, how they utilize this energy as they go up against the team that is also experiencing a momentum of their own. Uh, Milan uh, are far better than the record shows. They've underperformed because uh, of Stefano Pioli, because of injuries. Um, but they're a good team. They're a good team. They're a strong team, a team that can hurt you. So they Roma, again, have to be flexible. They can't approach that that encounter with Milan in the Europa League the same way they did this derby. This derby is in the past. This is history. The, the future, that's the where the focus is at. Uh, so Roma cannot rest on, on, on this match. They have to they have to move forward. Uh, they have to adapt. Mo- most importantly, they have to adapt because today you win against Lazio because you adapt to the situation. You don't play the way you did against Lecce. Couldn't have said it better myself. We will leave it there. We will see you uh, later in the week. Until then, ciao.